Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about chord tracks in uh, Cubase and why I love them. So the chord track of Cubase is a really cool track and it kind of uh, is uh, part of the more uh, miscellaneous tracks like arranger tracks, signature track, tempo tracks and, and so on. So it, it doesn't produce any uh, sound on its own uh, but it can help us uh, keep track of the chords in a song uh, or uh, or it could do a lot of other cool stuff as well. So let's have a look at it. Uh, this is a chord track. If you don't have one, you can right click and add a chord track. <laughs> there we go. So you can add, add one there. Uh, if you want to add uh, chords to it, you can either change your tooltip to the pencil or the draw tool and uh, click and draw them in. They will be added uh, according to the quantized note value that you select here or if you're like me you have them on your keypad. Right now they show up with a uh, um, more of a jazz uh, font kind of font. You can change that if you want uh, yours to look like that uh, by going to preferences and then selecting chords and pitches and then choosing the, your chord font so you can make them look like this or this I like the jazz one I now have uh, six different blank chords blank chord um, boxes and if I double click on one of them I can uh, change this uh, so I will make up my chord by choosing these different things this right side will be the uh, root note so I could say I want to have a C major 7 with a G in the bass and that would look like this and then I could go to the next chord by clicking the, the arrows right here and say I wanted to do a F sus4 and maybe a A minor 9 next one um, I don't know let's do something like this and then great so <clears throat> how do I know how that uh, sounds? Uh, one way to do that uh, is to unmute the chord track and then add a instrument. Okay, that's cool. Uh, if you don't want your chord track to always play uh, you might want to mute it. So I almost exclusively have my chord track muted. Um, you can do a couple of other cool things like if you record enable it, I believe this is how you would play your own chord. Like if I was here. Oh, you could do it this way. All right, so you could play them in as well if you want to, <clears throat> if that's easier for you. There's lots of advantages to using a chord track. Uh, and one of them is that you can uh, really easily pick up on an old project uh, if you're revisiting and you can have a look at what chords you used if you've been disciplined and actually done what you're supposed to do. Uh, I could I could show some examples of that, but um, Let's say this was an old example that my idea of this is that you can also create track versions if you want to like any other track. So uh, this would uh, make it really easy for me to add a new layer uh, and play just play the chords uh, like they're shown right here. 
Another great part of uh, the core track is the ability to expand your vocabulary. And for some, some of you guys, that, that won't be necessary at all. And you won't need the core track uh, to do that because you might be a concert pianist or a jazz pianist uh, by, by educational trade. Uh, and, and so you've got all of these stuff figured out. Uh, for other people, that would not be the case. I uh, am a drum major, uh, that's my uh, education, um, so I know a lot about polyrhythms and uh, uh, all sorts of different advanced rhythm stuff, but my uh, piano playing isn't up there uh, with my drum playing, obviously. So uh, I like to use the chord track sometimes to test stuff out and to try different things. and. The chord track really helps in in doing that. Let's see if we can um, create a new track version, and and I'll, I'll just show you what I mean. So let's just create one per bar here and move this out of the way. Double click it. Right now we're in the editor, uh, and here is where I uh, can just add normal chords like I showed you guys. Uh, but here in the chord assistant. Uh, we can do some cool stuff. So the first thing we need to do is uh, actually start somewhere. So so let's start with a D major. All right. Now, if I go to the next chord, uh, you'll get this picture. You can either do it as a list. Uh, right now, I think we need more chords. For, for something to show up in the list, let's try that. This is showing the previous chord and you get uh, chords that are near to it in relation. Uh, so as long as you keep keep within the the first or second cir half circle, that's gonna seem pretty familiar, uh, the sound of the chords. So I'm just gonna test some stuff out. So I guess you could do, these would be really easy, right? D or a G then an A, uh, or from the A we could try an E minor, all right, uh, and then we can do a uh, F sharp minor, that might be, that might be interesting, all right, um, and then if we did a G sharp minor, this is going to seem a little strange, but I want to, I want to go to an E, but keep the G sharp. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, add that here, G sharp, and then go back to the chord assistant. And so now uh, we might be uh, going to an, an A again, and maybe an A minor, and uh, see G and end on a C. Okay. Well, how, how's that gonna look? I mean, I'm just gonna play it. <laughs> so, uh, I think <clears throat> we're doing uh, D, uh, D major, and then uh, we're visiting E major and ending in C major <laughs> over the course of, uh, I don't know, eight bars. So, it might not be too practical, but it's pretty easy to, to do those changes. Uh, and you have a cool graphical interface. Uh, showing you the way. Circle of fifths is also cool. Uh, if I start in A, I could go to uh, uh, just view this as the circle of fifths. If I want to do like a, some something more jazzy, I could do uh, so on. That's a 
really cool advantage uh, expanding your vocabulary and uh, there's all sorts of different ways to uh, to actually do that um, one way for me would be to select these alter option click and drag them down to its own track and now I can have a look at the actual voicings if I want to for these uh, type of tracks it wouldn't be that interesting Let's say if I wanted to add a uh, something like this. Okay, <clears throat> interesting. That's more interesting. And if I want to, I can add them down here and have a look at what what's actually going on. In addition to that, if I select the chord track, go to the inspector, I can uh, choose the way it's going to play these. And right now it's an altered jazz. Uh, so you could do rock easy jazz and it's going to play it slightly differently. Okay. And it can play it as more of a poppy thing. So you can hear for this B, for example, it's not really playing only a B, but if we have a look, it has this seven in there and a, yeah, for this one it's, it's only a seven, but some of these will add uh, ninths or sevens and, and do some cool voicings that you can actually learn from that makes it sound more like a piano. So right now the voicings are set to piano. You can set them to basic or which would be uh, not too helpful in this uh, in this um, way of learning but you can set it to guitar as well and guitar modern jazz and okay so this would uh maybe sound better or be notated better uh, for a guitar let's see if we I, i'm not sure if i even have a proper guitar sound nylon guitar Ooh, there we go hello that's loud so let's try to copy these guys down mute the chord track just in case and let's have a look here interesting so that might sound uh, more natural than uh, just like block chords uh, with a um, like a piano piano chord played uh, on a guitar voicing wise interesting the third reason I love uh, the chord track is uh, that I can use it as a visual reference when recording. So I'm, I'm going to show an example of this and say that I want to record something here. Let's record some acoustic guitar. best best thing ever uh, and then I might have <laughs> a really really breathy string thing which is a uh, Spitfire Masse okay so let's try recording some bass notes here
I find it really easy to follow these chords. And often what I do as well is to uh, add these. So I do something like this and select something. And then I can uh, view both of them at the same time. I wish there was an option to just have the chord track show in the key editor. <sighs> That's my wish for uh, future features. Um, but for now, I, I do it like this and that works just fine. Sometimes I find it easier as well to have a look at uh, the other tracks that I've recorded as well. So I can view both of them and then uh, know that I'm, I'm not colliding with any voices and can have a, a, a greater understanding at of what the other elements are already doing. So that's a big advantage for my workflow um, when talking about the chord track. So I love the chord track and I use it in every project. I try to be very disciplined in keeping, actually, actually writing down all the stuff that I do uh, here. And also you're using mock tracks and, and everything so that it will be really easy for me to revisit some projects. I, I might have started on some sketches that I want to finish, or I might to have to redo a project for a client uh, one year down the line or two years down the line. And that's just going to save me a lot of time. And for my workflow, it helps to uh, know the chord structure. I, I like the, to think about uh, the music I make quarterly instead of uh, from notation. So that helps me a lot. So uh, I hope you hope you guys learn something and, and uh, implement the chord track in your projects as well. Uh, if you'd like to see more, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.